Good morning. Welcome to Pearls of Eden. Thank you all for joining me for today's uh, first day of the 31 day prayer challenge of uh, marriage restoration. And I am so excited to be with you. And I am hopeful that God is going to answer so many of our prayers. And, you know, there are three keys in order to getting results. I always say this if you're consistent, consistent, if you're disciplined, if you're persistent, you will have what it is that you desire. Psalms 37 says, take delight in the Lord and he will give you the desires of your heart because those who trust in God and who put their hope in him, they will not be put to shame. So if you're putting your hope in God for the best, according to his will, let it be done as it is in heaven on earth, well then let's expect more than uh, what we can imagine exceedingly abundantly more right all right so today we are going to pray for our husband's protection you know as you're going into this prayer challenge the enemy knows that you're seeking the face of god that you're seeking to do the will of the father and so as you are praying your for your husband or your spouse you know attacks may come so this is something that we want to do on a daily basis we want to get in the habit of praying for our, our husband's protection and his prosperity. So as he goes throughout the day doing business, when he goes to work, you know, you're praying that everything that his hands touch will prosper. But not only that, that the Lord will walk with him, that he will keep him, that he will preserve him, that he will be his shield and buckler, and that the favor of the Lord will go before him and surround him like a shield. These are all things you want to pray for because, you know, we don't war against flesh and blood. But you you know, you may want to pray for your cu your husband's company or your wife's company. You know, you want to understand that when you walk with the wise, you will be with wise. But if you have a council of foolish people, that affects the way your husband thinks. That affects his perception. And so I always pray that the Lord will limit the influence, remove the influence of evildoers, of wicked people who don't have sound biblical advice, but they're foolish, right? And let me just tell you, God will come through and he will bring wise counsels. He will plant people in your husband or your wife's life that will be a good influence. So you want to pray again, you want to pray against evil influences because this could affect um, if he's protected, right? He could be hanging with someone foolish and get himself wrapped up into something he should never be involved in, right? So these are different things and different factors when we're praying for our husband's protection. We want to include, right? We want to pray for good influences. We want to pray um, that the Lord orders his steps. We want to pray favor for our husband. We want to pray uh, that the Lord will walk with him and give him discernment fill him with his precious Holy Spirit. Yes, that he will be a man after God's own heart. So if you're serving someone or if you're loving someone, your your husband or your wife doesn't serve the, or know the Lord, it's not an excuse to pack your bags and leave because when the two become one, you are one flesh, right? And the Bible does not say, hey, you know, you should leave your husband, but that you should stay with them or you stay with your wife, right? Pray over them, love them. That is not a reason to leave them because their faith in the Lord is wavering or not there at all is actually an opportunity um, to pray for your husband's salvation or your wife's salvation. So that's part of praying for his protection as well, that his spiritual eyes, her spiritual eyes will be open to the things of God. Um, and that you also, when you're praying for his protection, you're praying that God gives him godly wisdom to go throughout his day. So again, these are the little things that um, you can bullet point in your prayers when you are praying over your spouse and of course let the holy spirit lead you because your holy the holy spirit knows exactly what's in the day for us all and when you include him and you pray in the spirit god's going to cover you in ways that you could not think of because the holy spirit is going to think through you and speak through you so Another thing that we're praying for for our families is the expansion of territory. We are praying the Jabaz prayer coupled with these 31 days of prayer. Um, you can find the Jabaz prayer in 1 Chronicles 4, chapter 10, you all. And I love this prayer because it is quite powerful in getting results. But remember, you have to be persistent, disciplined, consistency, and you will see results. Without those three keys, 
man, you're just spinning your wheels. But if you will dedicate yourself to prayer, dedicate yourself to the process and you're consistent, you will get results. You will come back with a testimony in Jesus name. All right. So Jabaz, let's talk about Jabaz for one moment because in uh, First Chronicles chapter 4, verse 9, it says, um, Jabaz was more honorable than his brothers. His mother had named him Jabaz, saying, I gave birth to him in pain. And I really never clung to the fact that, you know, Jabaz was born, his mother named him because she was in pain, right? Imagine your mother giving you a name because she was simply in pain and what that could have symbolized for his life, right? But I love how Jabaz, he was noted as he was more honorable. And I believe it's because he sought the face of God for his prosperity. He sought for God to order his step. He sought for the protection. And we see that Jabaz was a praying man because he offers a prayer to the Most High God. And he says this, Jabaz cried out to the God of Israel, Oh, that you would bless me and enlarge my territory. Let your hand be with me and keep me from harm so that I will be free from pain. And God granted his, re his request. And I always say, how much more for you and I? The word is for our edification. If you're willing to put it into motion, the word will work for you. God is no respect of a person, um, but he seeks to do his will through you. If you put it in his word, it's because he's willing and able to do so, right? His promises are yes and amen. And I love that, you know, Jabaz might not have had the best start. You know, his own mother, you know, said, hey, I named you because I, I gave birth to you in pain. And some of you may have your your beginnings of your life might not have been the best right it was in pain it was it was you didn't have the best childhood you didn't have the best beginnings but your latter shall be better than your former right for his glory and i love that we see that with jabaz that things may not have started well in the beginning but boy did he get more than what he could even think or ask or imagine god granted his a request and I am gonna be praying that. And what I always do is I substitute Jabaz's name and I put my name and I put my children's name and I put my husband's name and I say, Lord, Marilyn, uh, Marilyn, your servant is coming before you. Lord, will you increase my territory? Will you enlarge my coast? And when I'm talking about that, I'm not just talking about finances. That is part of it. But I'm talking about, Lord, will you enlarge me spiritually? I want to grow in the things of the Spirit. How many of you know that those things are priceless? There is so much to know of God. And people get stuck with the basics, right? But deep calleth upon deep. There's so much to understand by, about our God, right? So I want to grow and, and be stretched spiritually. I want to grow uh, my spiritual territory. I want to grow my influence in my ministry as I share the word of God. I want to reach more people because I am a, a soul winner for the kingdom of God, right? So I want to win more and more souls every day to Christ, right? Um, so I want him to, to, um, to enlarge my spiritual influence in, in my coast. How about physically, right? I want to be in great shape because I want to be able to run the race and I want to do so in a great way, right? I don't want to be limited by my health, right? So I pray for good health. I pray for my children to have favor and to have success not only to have favor with with god but to have favor with man because how many of you know you need both in this world right to uh to give me spiritually wisdom what do we talk about physical uh enlarge my ter territory and physically and health spiritually mentally right to have the capacity the discernment and the godly wisdom to go forth right um financially um educationally i want my spirit of influence to grow every year as much as the lord can it says i'm ready to handle right um and i don't just pray that over my life i'm praying this for my children i insert their names the acosta household will thrive and succeed in the name of the lord and one of the most beautiful things that i love about jabaz prayer is that he says that i would not cause pain how many of you know that the blessings of the Lord make one rich and it adds no sorrow? And the blessings from the world, they come with all kinds of, dis, dis, what do you call it, destruction, right? 
and depravities. But the blessing of the Lord make one rich and add no sorrow. And I like that because we don't want to get our blessings through pain, do we? No, we want our blessings to come because God is gifting them to us, right? So, all right, let's get to the prayer, guys. All right, Father God, I thank you for everyone that has come to be a part of this 31 days where we seek the face of God and we lift up our spouses to you, Lord. We know that it is not by my, not by power, but it is by the spirit of the living God. And you have the capacity, you have the ability, you have everything it takes, Father God, to soften hearts and to mend things and restore and to restore the years that the locusts ate, Father God. So we come to you on behalf of our of our spouses, Lord, we lift them up to you. May they have a heart of flesh. May they hear the word of the Lord. May they be drawn to the things of God and thirst and hunger for righteousness, Father God. May you open up their spiritual eyes of understanding as they go into the day that you plant people here and there that will speak a word of the Lord into their lives, Father God. We pray divine protection over our spouse. We pray a hedge around our spouses, a wall of fire, Lord, that nothing can penetrate it. Father God, we pray that as they go throughout the door, the day, that you would order their steps, Father God, that you would be with them as they go and they come. Lord, that your favor would surround our spouses like a shield, Father God. We thank you that you give them the mind of Christ, that they don't have the desires to go against your will, but there is something that is growing inside of them as you pour your spirit in them, that they have a desire for your will and your ways. Bless our marriage marriages, Lord. Help us to serve our spouses as we're going through these 31 days that we look for opportunities to be a blessing to our spouses, to lift them up, to speak kindly to them. You said for in Proverbs that the law of kindness and the tongue of wisdom, it was found within her. Let that be found within us too, Father God, that we can speak life into our husbands. We pray this and so much more, Father God, that you will begin, you will finish what you've begun, Lord, and let it be a good thing. In Jesus' name we pray and we thank you. Amen, guys. So welcome to the first day of the 31 day prayer challenge you all don't forget to add that jabaz prayer into your day right pray it over your children pray it over your husband pray it for yourself what do you believe in god for as we go into this month of august the first day august 1st number eight new beginnings Guys, before you know it, we will be entering the Hebrew year of Rosh Hashanah. What is that, you all? I talk about this every year, so hopefully you all know. But for my new subscribers, you know, we go into the spiritual year of 2024, right? We're going to be leaving uh, 5783 and entering 5784 in September as we celebrate the Feast of Rosh Hashanah. So, you know, I'll be talking more about that. But you all, this year is fastly closing and there's so many things that God has in store for us that he wants us to just kind of dig down and, and buckle up and get focused, right? And see what it is that we have to accomplish in this year through the vision that he has given us, through the plan. Um, and just, this is the time to really get laser focused, right? Before you know it, we will be in Rosh Hashanah and that's the spiritual year. And before you know it, we'll be closing out the natural year and entering into what I think is gonna be one of the most exciting, eventful years that we have seen in a long time, 2024. All right, guys, I love you. Don't forget to subscribe, share, like, y'all, and come back for more. I love you all, and I will see you soon. God bless you. Bye.